Hi. Ahoy. Welcome back to the table. It's my turn to say it, Nick. Yeah, I'm it's not my stopping turn. you. I'm not it's stopping my you. turn. The camera's on you. I'm not the camera's on you. me. It's my time. Yeah. <laughs> it's Zito time. This you is are, Zito you, clock. You are the dungeon master, after all. Look at that hand. He's got the glove. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Morgan's dead. Oh, well, wait. We're already <laughs> going. <laughs> Oh, we are. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ahoy, Wonders, and welcome back <laughs> to the table. Shanghai! I was on it! <laughs> <laughs> Great! <laughs> Because the man's, it. Because the man's a professional. I am. I get paid to do this, kind of. I don't know. I mean, you do. I, it, technically. It's more you get paid to be here. It's more. And it's, this it's, is what we do when we're here. It's more that I get the remainder after paying everybody else to be here. Okay. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. So, okay. Sure. Yeah. So, technically, I get paid to Economics. Be here. I know. Trickle down. Something like that. Voodoo it's, economics. Well, it's not really trickle down because you're making a wage. If anything, it's trickling up. I was more just saying terms I've heard, not so much calling you into question. But you know. I feel you. I feel you. Anyways, how's our dungeon master feeling? Yeah, how, how we doing here? Oh, he's going to do it again. Oh, God. No, don't do it. Right. Everybody roll a dice if you got he an even if you <laughs> Yeah, he didn't have any gems in it. Oh, stole you, you know what? Good point. He's got no gems, so you know what? Haha! -ha, I tripped you all up. You all flinched. Yeah. Get pranked. True. I was well what I was gonna say <laughs> is when he when he eventually does fill that up, uh we all have to roll a dice and if we get it, I am even, inevitable. We have to leave the table. Oh yeah, even in odds. <laughs> yeah. Odd stick around. It's like that whole fucking we're, episode we're all over flipped. again. Where last we left our heroes, where last we left our heroes. We're let we're let we're let I don't know where I am anymore. That was a scary episode. I don't know who I am anymore. That was a scary episode because we start this at five and the clock kept turning backwards and I was like, what am I going to go home? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't going to do that to you. <laughs> All right. So, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, last we left our heroes... Uh, you all fought the Chuadenja, a creature not of this realm that was hiding within an Udoth temple. And... After a grueling, grueling fight and a couple of old allies actually bursting through and helping you guys out, uh, you have all seemed victorious over the creature. However, in doing so, the creature let out a horrendous roar that has left Wake deafened and fe not frightened, but more kind of shook into his core. Paralyzed. And, and now he is sinking into the depths with this creature. I watch as the light above the crest leaves my friends alive. As I fall backwards into the darkness, down, down, twirling, ever downward. All right, I'm going to give you guys, go ahead and just roll me a, actually, you know what? Who would like to do something first? Because I will go ahead and forfeit on something if you uh, decide not to do anything. Uh, okay, look at that forfeiture being, wake dies, a miserable death. <laughs> 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 look. Uh... And Red just sits there with a crooked smile. Morgan, but <laughs> this, this Christmas all over again. Morgan, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if I have a whole lot that's gonna really help in this situation. That isn't diving in after him. I have. <laughs> and I feel like that's not gonna help anyone. I, it's only going to put me in danger. I technically have one thing, but it's really dangerous and it could kill him. Oh, now see, <laughs> that sounds like the kind of drama we're looking for. Now, would kill me. Now, do you wish to attempt it, or are you would going you to fucking astral chain this motherfucker? <laughs> <and all> <laughs> Because that doesn't actually hold someone in place. It just hurts really... them as they get away from you. No, it, it does hold. It's when you move, it hurts. Yeah, but I'm of falling. But he's, he's making a falling. But... <laughs> See, because I was thinking <laughs> I had something called Warden's Grasp, but unfortunately I can only trigger that on an enemy that has attacked a friend. And un oh. unfortunately the void of space isn't necessarily an enemy attacking my friend, so I can't oh. whip it oh, and pull Do it you out. have something? Oh, because I will have something out. if you don't have anything else. I have hold person. What, that, is, what does that I do? I think I'm already stunned. He's already stunned. Fuck. Oh, are you trying to hold the creature? Well, ho try to hold him, but... That that wouldn't just leave him yeah, suspended hold, in the air. Yeah, hold person is more of like a, hey, you're not moving anymore okay, kind of a thing. Uh, I got a burglar's pack. Would that, that would have rope, wouldn't it? No. Chroma. Okay. You know what? <laughs> I gonna, got nothing. I got nothing. All right. All right. No, I'm that's going fine. To that's talk the gravity that's, out of killing That is him. super fine. Because Red, as she stands up, she looks over towards Chromagill. Don't run away this time. She casts flight. 
Of course. Uh, all right. Is there? Do I need to do anything to try and swoop in and save him as someone who's not a native flyer? Yeah. So, so as uh, <laughs> as, as Wake is kind of like staring up in the air as he's watching the the sunlight beam away from the the tunnel that leads back up to the surface. All of a sudden, he sees this giant blob form just like swan dive off the side. I feel like I'm gonna need some sort of like athletics check or something to, to grab him as he falls. Uh, that would you be. Are, you are a larger creature than I am. You are That's a larger true. creature, so I would say for this, since you are on concentrated flight, uh, I'm going to grant you. Well, first you have to get to him because he's like maybe now 40 feet drops from the, right. uh, from you. Okay. So roll me a acrobatics or athletics of your choosing. Athletics for sure with these bonuses. That is going to be a 21. Nice, 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 nice. I knew there was a fucking reason that Red should have the flight spell. <laughs> I knew there was a reason. She came prepared. Yep, you uh, you get just in front of Wake. Uh, you are able to grab him, so... As you just fall, you see an angelic, mushroomy figure swoop down. It's going to be okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That is a stained glass <laughs> painting if I ever heard one. <laughs> Wait, it's, just frozen. It's like that <laughs> shot when like a bird swoops by and you see like the single feather falling. Only for me, it's just a sprinkling of spores. Do you want to roll a uh, wisdom saving throw to get out of this? I will try! That's an 18. You get out. Ah! Ah. You, uh, do you guys look back down? Assuming Chromagill didn't set me at the precipice of the cliff. <laughs> no, you're you're kind of now like... So think of it this way. The height of the uh, Ziggurat's elevator was probably about 200, uh, 200 feet. So you are now sitting at the 140 mark, and you fell another 40 feet. So you're now like halfway down, and this creature is still falling halfway down. <laughs> Roll a perception check, both of you. Uh... Another 18. Modified 20. <laughs> yeah, you both see this thing clearly. Uh, the entire bottom of the uh, of the elevator is just a sea of spider legs. I'm going to strike up a torch and just drop it down. Okay. Do we see, like, how far? I mean, I know this thing isn't eternally, like, this, this building itself is not eternally big. No. Although I guess we don't know how far below the earth. You are think of it this way, you are in the center of it. You yeah, are so okay. we're at the highest point we can be within this thing. Yes. So I'm just gonna drop it down and watch how far down it goes and see if any of those hairy legs start kindling. Oh, they do. Uh the it's a little wisp of fire and it kind of like burns down on one leg, but the bristles are so hard and so thick that like the flame kind of like fizzles out after a bit. Well, I was trying to burn it to ashes so it wouldn't possibly ever return, but that's not going to work with that. So, hold on, Ziak, I'm going to go back. Are you okay, by the way? Uh, you guys are, like, just sitting comfortably in the air right now in Chromagill's arms. In the arms of a mushroom. That's where you are. <laughs> you know. can fly back up if you want. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yep, you return up. Uh, Ziaka is... <laughs> oh, so real quick, I'm going to say something. Cause I would have been really stupid, but this is... Uh, me being on the intelligence level of Chromagill real quick. No, that's fine. Uh, because I was thinking like, all right, well, our next move is probably going to be this elevator has gone down a bit from me making it descend when I uh, pulled the things apart and the Chuadinja pulling it down. So I should probably climb back up on that thing to get the elevator up and running while still having the capability of flying. I was like, all right, I'm going to athletics check to climb up this Fl thing. Flight lasts for an hour. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, then I guess I'm just going to fly up to the top of the little gazebo thing and uh, look at this elevator contraption Imagine again. His mushroom hat just spinning while he's doing this, spinning out. <laughs> just a... Oh. <laughs> the helicopter. Uh, so what you see is, uh, since you pretty much pulled apart one of the uh, flames, that one is just sitting above where, like, the tip of one of the, where the uh, mountains are, and the other one is spinning still, trying to keep in double time. So it's... Pretty much just sitting there, awaiting for something else to happen. It's not like, it's not being pulled. It's not yeah. churning. So it's kind of just like sitting there idle. Like, okay, kind what do I do, boss? Angle as we're trying to go up. I'm assuming. Yeah. 
Uh, Unfortunately, it is kind of slack now. Th th this elevator is no longer straight. Uh, well, I start trying to, to pull that flame over like I had seen uh, done earlier. Sleight of hand. That's not going to be good. Five. <laughs> well, all you're doing is just pushing the one flame over back into the middle. Yeah, it's but, not spinning as hard as it was before. Right. But it is still spinning pretty fast, so you are going to feel a little bit of uh, burst of energy on your hand. Uh, Wake's going to walk over to Red, who got the absolute shit kicked out of her throughout this. Quick second. Two remember. points of damage. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, shit. Friction burn. <laughs> Owie, my yeah, it's, it's friction burn. Yeah. <laughs> and and with, uh, with how close I am. And and with that, <laughs> the the two the two orbs of light begin to spin together, and the elevator, still slanted, begins to rise back up. Let's just say if that had done a little bit more friction damage to me, Chromagill wouldn't have been coming down from that gazebo, and someone would have needed to check on him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, Wake's gonna walk over to Red and hand her a uh, greater healing potion. Okay, cool. And greater healing potions are four d four plus four. I will roll that. Unless you would like to roll that. I mean, we're, we're here to roll dice. It may yeah, as well. I'll roll some it's dice. the game, man. That's four. Seven. Eleven. Getting good rolls. Twelve. Twelve plus four. Sixteen. Well, she's not as haggard, and the blood that was trickling out of, like, her nose and her mouth are no longer, like, steadily just coming out, so... She's, she's back up to full, and with your assistance, she gets back up. Ziaka instantly goes in for the fucking dive lariat hug. Oh, uh, you know, not the way I expected to be reunited, guys, but uh, it's great seeing you again. It was a, a red kind of just, like, dusts herself off, lets, uh, let, lets Ziaka get her hug out, and then, like, lets her go, and she just, like, smiles to you. Well... That wasn't exactly what we planned for either, but we're glad we were able to help, and it's very nice to see you again. Yeah. So the uh, portal. What's uh? I I did I had no idea this was here. What's the what's the story with this? Chromago drops down from the gazebo. I got the elevator working. <laughs> You're basically on fire. Uh, <sighs> Ziaka kind of like turns and looks at the gazebo. The doors are shut because the elevator got all fucked up. Uh, it's still rising as of right now. She's, she, like, all three heads kind of, like, turn and look to the sky as the sun's beaming. Uh, get the beams of the sunlight are, uh, are popping in further and further as you guys rise up. Allow the door to open. That's the plan. I was just wondering, like, I mean, you guys came through it, so you, you must know way more about it than I do. Yes, I do know. He will be complete, and he will explain the moment we step through. Blink, blink. All right, question two while we're waiting for that. Pulls back out Krakatoa. You said this is the soul of the collective one? She cl she gently plucks it out of your hand. That's probably for the best. She produces the heart from Jahal Cove. Oh, dear God! Oh. The heart of the collective one. <laughs> yeah, that thing that nearly burnt the Yeldon to death. Yep. So she pulls out that. She has the soul in her hand. And then from around her neck, she pulls out a necklace. And in between it looks like it's the entire continent, like an, in an image in gold. We have the heart, soul, and body. The Earth's might will be great. Cool. That is what our mission was. Our pilgrimage was to find the body. Then you were going to be really glad that I chose the right chest because <laughs> they, the other two, got eaten. I wonder what was in those. Mm. Could have been anything. This entire place was these entire this entire location, the one in Jahal Cove, the one in the Emerald Coast, and the one here. These are all temples designed to make the collective one complete and whole. This will bring Uroth's power to a greater scale. He'll become something much greater than just a speck within the ocean of Kelpie. Cool. Uh, Kelpie hasn't exactly talked to me much anyway, so we're uh, just going to assume that. Kelpie's not really on my side right now, so. She is on all of our side. Oh, hooray! Unfortunately, she is quite haggard. For what reason, I do not know. The Collective One was only able to speak to me in pieces. I mean, but maybe, as a whole, we may all be able to hear his words. Maybe Risp would be able to... I mean, he, he's, he seems more connected to the gods than anybody I've ever met. The Kobold no longer respects the gods. Oh, shit. That's right. 
Yeah, R R Red kind of like looks to looks to you, Wake. Yeah, I, we don't know where he's drawing magic from anymore. We it, we thought it was the gods. Now he's pulling it from somewhere else, and it's kind of frightening. Is he okay? He seems his common chipper self. Nothing has changed other than the fact that he's lost his faith in the gods. I mean, I know we were uh, looking to help him become one, but uh, maybe maybe that's uh, maybe he's found a path to do that. He claims that there is more beyond the realms and that he's drawing energy from it. I'm not even going to pretend I understand any of that. I don't either, and that's what's frightening me, Wake. All right, cool. We're both frightened. Well, I'm not frightened, but I'm confused. Concerned is maybe how I feel. I hand you a greater healing potion. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I could really use this. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, I, I take, I take my hand, just like <laughs> sizzle out some of the burning embers on your head. Oh, I hadn't noticed those. I was too con confused by. All the other pain. Feel free to roll out the 4d4 plus 4 to heal yourself. When uh, Ziaka holds the two objects in her hand, the two snakes that are sitting on her, the two snake heads that sit on her shoulder, uh, like rise up to the same level as her head in the middle. Uh, and the moment the one looks at the, like they're going to turn and speak to all of you, you expect, everyone here has heard it, you expect one lie and one truth. They speak in unison with her. There's a tinge of truth and lie in everything, question mark. What do they say? They, uh, when they open their mouths and they, they say, though you may not understand, like, they, like these are all different voices, by the yeah. way. Like, one's a male, chorus. one's male, one's like this weird, almost like feral etherealness kind of voice, like almost like you're speaking to the undead. I'm imagining Ursula from The Little Mermaid. And then middle is just straight up Ziaka's regular voice. Though you may not understand... And though it may seem that this is all too confusing, the Collective One has watched you this entire time, and what you have done will serve us greater in the long run. Wow. Um... You have done good work this day. The world, the world, if not Udoth, the entire beast, the all-father of all Earth, considers you heroes. Well, hey, that's, that's a little something to put in the cap, I guess. I mean... Makes sense that he's been watching. We've been carrying around artifacts from him for you guys here. Bang you guys here banging from behind the gazebo. Get me the fuck out of here! I can't oh, wait hey. to tell my circle about this. Is that Scrung? I believe it is. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna go yeah, try to pry probably. the door open. Yeah, like the moment. Like, oh my God! There's so many snakes. Let me out. Maybe it's I just, don't want to now. It just wait, had no, to I'm... be snakes. Ziaka just turns and looks to you. That's probably my collective. Ah. That makes sense. Been a while since we've seen them. Let's <laughs> open up. Yeah, the last you remember when you guys were at Rite, uh, Ziaka was traveling with a shit ton of other uh, Yanti companions that were like almost like a clergy that was walking alongside of her. Mm -hmm. That's what she's speaking about. Mm. Uh, when you when the uh, gazebo reaches the top as much as it possibly can, now that the doors kind of slant, the elevators kind of slanted. Uh, you guys watch as the gazebo doors rise up, Star Trek style. And Scrung kind of like just falls forward, just like ah, ah, ah. He's, he his eyes are just widened as he's just sitting there looking around, like, oh good, it's you guys. Ah! He looks over at Ziaka, seeing she's three headed, and then just faints. He's all tuckered out. He's he's had a day. It's been quite a journey for him. Speaking of which, where's Renfang? Renfang's been there the whole time. He's now looking. <laughs> he's now standing over Scrung, and he just like takes his great sword. Hey, 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 hey. No. We all had an agreement here. He's coming with us. He's getting ready to leave, and that leaves you in charge. There we she go. She's his great sword back. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, with that, uh, Renfang feels that this entire fucking, like, setup with you guys is complete. Uh, he's not going to wait for you to leave, but he is going to go back to uh, the Bluey camp to tell them the news. Pretty much at this point, he's like, all right, well, if the contract has been honored, then that is great. I don't know if this is of any use to any of you, but here's a reward for your assistance in getting back my authority. He hands his great sword over to someone. Oh. This is heavier than I expected. It's also, not, I can't it's use a, it. It's a great sword to him, but it's a long sword to anyone else. Still very dense. Is it made of metal? Yes. Well, <laughs> Romagel wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, I mean, he's grateful for the, you know, 
the feeling, the the. Uh, yeah, this feels more of like a little trophy more than it does yeah. an actual any like an actual a weapon. Tool. Mm-hmm. Maybe Scrung would like it. Mm. I don't know, Morgan. Does this thing fit you? I toss it over to you. Uh, it's nice, but uh, does it do? Does it feel special? <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna roll something to see if it does feel <laughs> special. Nah, it don't feel any special to you. It just feels like a really fucking, a really beefy short sword. It's got like a, something in its core. It's really dense. Mm. Maybe Scrum would like it. He likes trophies. It's some kind of metal, but you can't tell what kind of metal it is because of the, the sheer property of its weight. It's a short sword with a heavy property. Huh. We need to take it to a forge or something because I, I don't even know what metal this is made out of. The uh, gazebo now uh, lights up, and you see in the center an archway the kind of like forming over a light blue light. It's kind of like wavy and kind of makes like a weird ripple in the in uh in the archway. Ziaka looks over to Red, and she like like all three heads kind of like turn to her and just go. He opens the way for us. We may speak to him. Uh, he he. The collective one. Oh, hey, collective one. He she like looks over to Red and Red steps through the portal and then she looks to the lot of you. He will have much to say to you. Oh, uh, I guess he's in are there. Are we going to be, uh, just quick question. Are we going to be able to come back here? Because we still have to deliver that thing that you gave me to Mead. That will be done in time. Okay. We, we will, re- I guarantee you, we will most likely return here. All right, cool. I'm just going to hop on through. And she looks to you too. Wait, hops in. Yep. Stargate. Chromagale, not to, not to turn down an invitation. Just... Saunters forward and will walk. You kind of hear like a teddy bear squeak as you play on like you're like a little too wide for the for the portal. <laughs> <laughs> kind of just constricts Morgan, a little bit. Like Ziaka kind of like turns to you, Morgan, and just goes, "Oh, I actually didn't account for that." Him not fitting or me? No, him not fitting. Oh. She kind of just, she's like, looks, leans down to you. He's quite rotund. But I'm right it, here! <laughs> but isn't he just adorable? She like looks over, she like turns and looks back and she looks to you and she like holds her arm out like, yeah, like, yeah, let's I, shove. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I got it. Roll athletics check. <clears throat> you got Winnie the <clears throat> Pooh in a magic portal. <laughs> oh, that is a 19. With the combined efforts of Ziaka and Morgan, you just you just feel like something My like... My tumbly is rather rumbly. <laughs> <laughs> Logic dictates he should have just like fell face first through the other side, but yeah. he just disappears from, from the eighth year. And then she turns to you and lets you go forth. All right. You feel like your finger disappears from your whole body when you pass it through. Weird. Your arm's gone. Like you feel like I, I, welcome to the club. You feel like your arm physically disappears, like it's like your body feels lighter. Try to come in chest first. I don't want to. I already have a hole there. Morgan steps through. Okay. Ziaka will follow after. Somebody should grab Scrung. <laughs> Ziaka. Ziaka kind of like turns and looks down at Scrung. She shakes her head. She'll, he'll be fine. <laughs> Just sleep here with the snakes. Yeah, let, let him sleep here for a little bit. He's been spending all this time trying to find an escape. He faints right outside the portal. And There's an alpha bl- Blargas somewhere there. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah, we're like going back to talk you know to what? boss, and we stopped them, meaning that guy's still just there just somewhere. Waiting. Yeah, just with all that rumbling, nobody's ever come to report. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. The tip of her tail kind of like constricts around his stomach, and she takes him in. All right. Which oh, never the mind. the lot of you <laughs> step through the gate. You are hit with this weird, almost sort of like you. This weird moisture kind of like rumbles through the air and it kind of like engulfs you, but it's not like humid. It's almost pleasant. Like it's like a nice spritz of a mist from after like being in the sun for a long time. Uh, as you step through. You are now standing in what looks like a very lush field. This place is teeming with life. There are vibrant trees as far as the eye can see around you. Very lush. This is like a jungle. 
Uh, looking up in the sky, there are vines, like, all around you. Uh, they don't- they- they leave openings for you to see into the sky. The sky, however, is not, like, light blue as you know it. It almost feels like it has this tinge of red that also mixtures into the light blue along with it. Ziaka, where are we? Uh, one second before I get to that, because sure I'm still not- thing, so. Yeah, there, there's a little bit more I have to describe here. Uh, this entire jungle is teeming with life. There are- there are all sorts of living creatures. You see, like, lizards climbing on the trees. There are birds of trop- of, like, tropical birds, like, all sitting around and singing. Uh, there are plant- there's plant life here that, Chromagill, you have never in your wildest dreams even imagined or knew such, like, types of flora could even exist. This is all alien to you. What a realm. It reminds me a little of Jahal. Uh, as- Ziaka steps through, you turn around, and you see that there is another archway right behind you. Like, it's covered in vines. There's maybe, like, a emerald tree bow is kind of, like, sitting up in the top watching you guys step through. Uh, before you, as Ziaka steps forward, uh, before you, the entire earth around you... Remember that one scene in uh, Pikachu, uh, Detective Pikachu where they're on the Tortilla's back and the entire, like, almost fucking yes, planet Tortilla. itself shifts... <laughs> Tortilla, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's Tortuga. Hey, Tortilla. Whatever. You're in Texas. Or you can say Tortilla. <laughs> anyway, there's a factory just no, down you're the great. road. Fair enough. The the fucking giant <laughs> the whatever it is. The big ground turtle. Big big earth turtle. Yeah. Uh, so the entire planet like around you, like you watch as like one part of the horizon warps to the left, the other part warps to the to the right, but the entire center point of your gravity remains the same. Nothing's changed. It's almost like. You're standing in a hallway, and, like, the entire area is surrounded in a glass tube, and the pathway before you, kind of like the earth, shifts out of the way. You now watch as there's a giant pyre in the middle of the entire archway. Uh, that pyre looks like a crown of earth. Like, it looks like an earth, uh, spike of earth that has multiple thrones made out of this weird-shaped statue, and sitting... Encoiled around it, and three heads now sitting on three of the platforms of this to of this uh, of this uh, throne is the collective one. Now with three heads on its shoulder rather than just the one. So it's big. Describe to me what the collective one looked like again. Uh, the he collective. Was, he was a giant serpent. Yeah, he was like he was like a like serpent. Like he wasn't so much a serpent. It was more like he had the uh, his, the top of his head almost looked like a serpent, almost like a hooded cobra. And then when it gets to the chest cavity, it's like a dragon in a sense, almost, almost like a drake. But okay. he's got three heads this time, not it's just one? It's three heads, and he looks like, like, you can't see his entire body at this point. He takes up the realm. You can only see the heads and parts of his body that encircle around this uh, throne. This is not what I expected when I chased a blue kobold onto an island, I'll be honest. He is very big. Siaka motions her hand to you, like, very welcoming, like, he awaits. Where exactly are we, Siaka? We are on Udoth. Oh. Chromagill mm. starts stepping forward as a as a former big man and a big player and a big crowd. You gotta size he, him up. <laughs> he kind of walks up. But yeah, then, you're gonna size up a fucking child of the gods. He's not. He's not gonna size him up. He is going to 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 humble himself and show that he 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 recognizes big recognize big. Uh, he takes a knee for this guy, and and just just goes thank you for welcoming me into your realm. Yeah. Wait follows, uh, doesn't exactly kneel, but just sort of, like, looks around very confusedly. Uh, the moment you guys get to a certain point, as you, like, stand now in front of this thing, the heads, like, they don't move, but they leer and look down upon you. They have this grin on their face, but it's not menacing. You don't feel any, like, primal fear walking to this thing. It's welcoming. It's allowing you here. Uh, hey, Mr. Collective One, long time no see. I uh, never really got a chance to Thank you for your help back on Jahal. Those, God, it feels like years ago. This one now complete holds a message for the lot of you. You heard three voices come out of all of those heads, but it all centers into your soul. Oh, I felt that one in my arm. Is this what it's like when I talk to people? God, oh, I feel, it's kind of in my head. Yes, Warden. <laughs> oh. It is the gift of speech that nature has given. It is an invisible voice to, to, to many, but to few, it is one that is given throughout. 
kind of just shrinks away. Felix. My voice. <laughs> my... Feeling something so much bigger than him that is also clearly powerful. Your voice is but a fraction of nature's voice. It stems from me. It stems from the All-Father. So he's like your grandpa. Oh, well, it's, it's very nice to formally meet you. Be Papa. not afraid. Allow this one to speak a message. Of course. This is going to be a little bit long, so get ready. No time. Clearly, you must have questions, and you know that my presence is not welcome in this realm by most. The land is but a speck upon Kelpie. However, I am La Saranus incarnate, and this is the message it brings to you. Though Kelpie does not see eye to eye with the Lord of Earth, Udoff is not death is not deaf to Kelpie's struggles. Gaping wounds and parasites of the infernal realms claw from her seas, and with the combined efforts of various gods, they try to keep those scars clean. The other gods beseech the Fae of Water to place her trust in the mortals who traverse her celestial form. Surely, if any wish to protect the realm, it is the children of her waters. Whether they walk upon land or swim beneath the waves, Kelpie's children are among the realm trying to keep other incursions at bay. While the, while the head of the serpent draws to the center of the world, the strength of mortals combined with the, assist, uh, with the assistance of otherworldly bodies can purge this parasite back into its containment. Mortals of Kelpie know this. The Lord of Earth grants you his might. We now house the strongest acolyte of the All-Father Beast in the Water Phase realm for the time being. And our might is now yours. How you wish... he You watch as... A piece of the entire tower like kind of like splinters off and like jets itself right before you stand child before us and he looks it, that was aimed at Ziaka as she now upholds all three pieces of the collective one the spear at the very tip splits into three and jabs not only through the art uh, the artifacts but also through her uh, uh, is what? that <clears throat> I'm guessing this is okay. Ziaka is not does not look hurt in the slightest. The I, three you you watch as the three heads now kind of like dissipate from her shoulder and almost look like they're kind of forming in the middle, returning her to a single-headed creature. Okay. And the artifacts all center towards the middle of the necklace. And they now create a golden idol with the same head of the collective one. And our might is now yours. How you wish to shape it is for you to decide. Should your power shake and falter, know that while our wrath is yours, wrath can also cause much devastation. You may walk between my collective ziggurats and venture back to lands once visited at thy freedom. But use your time wisely. My, uh, our eyes have, have deemed that the demon approaches from the south of the body very soon. Hey, you want to know what this uh, object kind of looks like to you, Wake? What does it look like to me? It looks like the scarab that you're holding. Um, Mr. Collective One, that seems very similar to this. I hold, I hold it forth. I know that it's partly from you. Indeed. Place it upon the spear. I place it on there. <laughs> And you watch as it melts and kind of bleeds on top of the idol that is sitting on Ziaka's necklace. Oh, I feel like I needed that. <laughs> Fear not. The power was but a fraction should, uh, should such an, an occurrence of our meeting did not, uh, did not transpire. Right. What you have here is the continent's power, its own wrath in your hand. Oh. And it's a spear? Nope. It's, okay. uh, it's the medallion sitting on her necklace. Gotcha. So basically, what he was, what he pretty much told you is that he only, what Ziaka gave you was only a fraction of the power that you could give to the pirates. Now you pretty much just have a giant bomb that is pretty much the continent itself that you can turn into a weapon. If you forge technology based around this object, if the pirates find some way to harness this power, 
the very might of La Serranus itself as a governing body can be po- can be forced through this thing. Could move mountains. Quite literally. He, exactly. Mm, he could create mountains. However, he warns you that again, based on his warning, uh, what you have here, you can use this item here. Like the medallion itself can be used as well, but that will summon the collective one from the entire continent itself. And by doing so, it will wreak havoc on the land. You probably don't want to do that. That is a last-ditch effort if all else fails. Basically, like, way too unstable to use by itself. We can possibly harness this power somewhere at some point, but if we try to just use it, it would probably be bad. Uh, no, it, it would solve your problem, but there would be collateral Dest- damage. A ton of destruction at its wake. Okay. You're, you basically would be erupting the Collective One from the very middle of the continent out of it. So basically you're summoning <laughs> but Godzilla. you blowing up those demons, though. Yeah. You, it's pretty much summoning Godzilla to stop the incursion. We have to... Look, I know it sounds crazy. We have to set off a bomb to put out this fire. <laughs> that does work. That is, I was going to say, that is exactly a thing that really happens. Yeah. Uh, the collective one releases the spear from out of Ziaka. There's no blood. The holes kind of like cover over. Good. Uh, Ziaka now like pats herself down. Oh, I haven't felt myself in years ever since you have been splintered, great one. Child, you were a very, you are a very, very bright and astute voice of myself. Let it be known that when this is all over, you may you may as you may actually succeed me if I go back to sleep. So is he Congratulations, <laughs> guys. You have just created a new acolyte of Udoth on Kelpie. Created an avatar. <laughs> oh. I'm sure that uh, Red kind of just like just folds her arms. Huh. My wife's a god. Let that sink in for a moment. And <laughs> Uh, eh, the congratulations. Vo- my, my, my job in the Volition is very weird. This is not the strangest thing. <laughs> I'm. This isn't the strangest thing. I, I, he can I'll vouch. I, frankly, yes, we've met acolytes. I've never met one that has... I never thought I would see the birth of an avatar, to be fair. No doubt the lot of you have many questions you would wish to ask of me. My knowledge is very sparse. My form now completed. My eyes have only been able to see the entire pl- the entire continent as of now. But whatever I know, I will impart my knowledge onto you. If you guys have any questions you would like to ask the collective one, go for it. <laughs> oh boy! The spirit of the land. You pretty much have the entire continent of La Serana speaking to you. Chromagill has a ton of questions, but none of them relevant or well, that's fine. At no, all. dude. <laughs> you are talking to your dad. You pretty much you're talking to your great grandfather. <laughs> the the person the thing that exists beca- or you exist because of this thing. Oh man. I mean what I'm saying more is like he is going to have tons of questions. Just like, tell me what people in this place are like. What is this? <laughs> like just he just wants to know shit, so he's going to be like Full of just curiosity about the world, and that's completely fine. I'm granting you guys three questions each, but we'll oh, have a ra- we'll have oh, a round robin style. So if you want it to be fluff, by all means. If you want it to be <laughs> something that has to do with the onrush, then he'll tell you as much as he can. Uh, do we want to roll initiative to see who gets the questions first? I imagine people are still sure. thinking up there. As I do, yeah, have I was, I was, I was going to say I'm I don't still... I don't have one ready to go. That's yeah. sort of why I was. Couching mine in the... I don't think uh, Chromagill has anything super poignant for what's going on, but he is just I mean, hey, if it's fluff, it's world building. Yeah. Um, this, so, go ahead. This island that all of the uh, creatures of the Onrush spread forth from, how did they end up coming from there? I mean, you're part of the land, so surely you must know that... You must know how they ended up there to begin with. This Geist Isle, was it? Gastile? Gastile. Gastile is another body of Udoth that I am not familiar with. <clears throat> if it is something to be said, the gods are a concept. The acolytes are the voice of this concept. That must mean that there are other acolytes, other powers of the Allfather, that are stemmed forth in these small branches of isle within the waters itself. Do you know of any of your other brothers or sisters? 
I was not able to see them with, with what power I had. The concept of La Saranus itself was a small, insignificant bit within the body of Kelpie itself. But now with the land in such great fear and Kelpie now having to seek aid from the other gods and the mortals now seeking me, seeking the concept of the Allfather, my powers have grown stronger. Those are the two I have for right now. Mm-hmm. Now, now that I've witnessed you and your just kind of like holds his arms Yeah, up. The, the three heads kind of like <laughs> turn and look towards you. In your magnificence, I just, I, I need to know. My, my life has always been in trying to find, to find harmony and to make the realm that I was born into and the ones that neighbored me to try and get them to just see each other and get along. A noble cause of neutrality. What drives a man <laughs> to become I'm neutral? <laughs> <laughs> There it, my wife, there it is. There it is, hello. folks. Yep. <laughs> uh, Chromago kind of just like sort of lowers his head. But among kelp er, on on Kelpie with with such water and you being the 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 voice of the earth, it just seems like these are two things that working in in harmony just will be an endless battle and endlessly difficult. How? How do I do that? He kind of just sort of falls, like, just like, I don't know what to do. It's every, every side of this I've seen has come from such different directions and from such different perspectives. I don't see how to see, make these meet. Fauna, stand. He gets up. Very, still very shaken, but like. Technically, you're Flora. A bit, eh, true. I stand. <laughs> <laughs> I have a foot in both worlds, Wick. That's fair. Mm. I mean, you're also you're also a fun guy, which is <laughs> it's which really is a plan. yeah. I mean, if this was elixir, she would have called you all carbon. <laughs> the create uh, the great creator, just uh, mud child. I'm at least one eighth soul. <laughs> <laughs> After all has been said and done, and now that you stand before the very embodiment of the land from which you were birthed from, how has this altered your path? I. I hadn't sensed your power in such... Magnitude? (laughs) Sure, yeah. Magnitude. And it's it's presence just so purely that it's more that my... I've become reinvigorated in my mission to have people understand that this is the kind of energy and and life that we can, you know, produce on, on land. But at the same time, it just feels like so much. I didn't realize how far I was from realizing our power. The gods do not form without the belief of the creatures that walk along them. It's basically having a crisis of faith in the like, oh man, I thought I knew like what we were about, but there's so much more and I feel inadequate. And he's like, just sort of like getting a weird fungus anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> Stay your fears aside. The land does not cast you out, nor does it feel that you are insignificant to it. You are living oh. your you are living your life the way you feel it needs to be done, as nature intended. This pleases the All Father. Okay, good. <laughs> like just like big sigh and like as if he took something off of his shoulders. He just kind of like, oh. The All Father. Okay. The All Father is that of uh, the All Father Udoth is that of one who wishes to propagate land and any creature on it. In some case, no god is no god is capable of being able to create its concept without at least another small form of another. That is the ultimate unity and the ultimate chaos when it comes to the gods itself. So spreading knowledge about you will help you regain your power? And the belief in us, yes. Do you feel strongly of the world you wish you wish to save? Absolutely. Then we ask nothing more of you. You are a champion in our eyes. The All Father will know of this in one way or another. Thank you. And he kind of just sort of like looks as if he's got something profound to think about. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? May have made a missionary out of Chromagill. <laughs> Can tell all your mushroom babies. <laughs> yeah. I the- met God. <laughs> and then the big snake thing looked at me. Yeah, and then the biggest one. He said I was a champion. 
He said I was the good boy. And if you think I'm big, wait till you see this guy. He was like this big. <laughs> <laughs> This is another thousand years when you're the size of a mountain. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just like fucking, oh, Margaret bringing some biscuits. There's some newfangled shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> for anyone who have seen that comedy special, hey, deep cut for you. Yeah, yeah there you go. Say, too well, deep dude, for my blood. Yeah. You have to watch Randy the Puppet. Randy uh, writes a novel. Randy I'd writes a novel. It. It's a very good, it's a very good show. Uh, so, all right. So... Morgan slowly walks up to the Collective One, just rubbing his shin heavily, contemplating. As the mortals say, penny for your thoughts, Wraith. Mm. He's so quippy. Yeah. I have learned from this one, and this one has only gathered colloquialisms from this one, as she points to, from Morgan to Ziaka to Red. He's probably heard all of them being, you know, the land. Hmm. True. I now Fair hear enough. every voice. I'm not going to ask you a question. <laughs> Holding up. <laughs> I only have three. <laughs> Better be on our best behavior. Back. Monkey's I have one that I want to save. As someone who used to be a mortal man, but now brought back as a wraith, as a, I, get, I, a tool, I feel like a tool of Vecker. It, I used to have my own life. I used to have something to move forward to, something to strive for until get the incursion at Gast Island. When my life was suddenly ended so abruptly and I lost everything, and I was given this twisted form of a second chance, I just lost that drive. It's almost like a father nudging their child to ride their first cycle, but... What's that? <laughs> cycle? I'm sorry, go on. I've lost direction. I've, it's, I feel like I'm autonomous. Like I'm just a living weapon at this point. Granted, my my desires and ambitions are very similar to my allies. He points to Chromagill where that's all I know, but I can, I can't remember much before I lost my life. Like, I feel like I've been plucked out of my timeline. Why am I here? <laughs> Man. Oh. The deepest question. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Collective one is like, is there any sort of geographical question you'd like? I need to know my purpose. I'm a geology professor, not a philosophy <laughs> professor, so. Vecker's will is one of those that Kelpie has asked for assistance on. I see. I cannot speak for the realm of the dead, though I do know that your life was shaped of the earth but not of one that was governed from my body. I see. You still, you have not been, your life may have, your physical self might have ended, but through it all, you still are part of Kelpie. You have not been abducted from, from whence you came from. You have just been brought back as it, you have been brought back, and unfortunately, if you see it as a way of means that you are a tool, that is your own prerogative to keep yourself sane. Mm -hmm. You see it that way. Vecker sees it that you are a champion making sure that this realm prospers. You're a champion, too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you, Cromwell Gill. That means a lot from you. <gasps> I unfortunately, my eyes have only opened just now. Fair the, enough. The land that I've, the land I now see that is riddled with creatures trying to encourage upon it, things that don't belong here. Only now, with your assistance, a child of Vecker can now a child of Udoth within the grand body of Kelpie be able to assist a realm that is slowly being invaded. Cogs 
no matter how small, always strive to push something forward. You seem to think that you're a cog. Hmm. But in the grand scheme of things, you are helping this world, no matter how small you believe yourself to be. The greater good is being is being put here. Hmm. Morgan just nods with a little small small uh, smile of, re- of relief. Just nods and bows to the collective one and just steps away. Okay. Anyone else got questions? Lore, fluff, otherwise. Sounded like you had one more to go. I do, but it's it's one of those like uh, a big, bigger, bigger over encompassing ones. ones. Uh, well, I, mean, I can I can ask it for a, for a more fluff one just to throw in between there. Uh, Chromagill. Oh, great one! I am curious. What is the largest creature on the land? Upon my governing body, there lives a titan. A, a titan nestled deep within the mountainside. Hmm. Which, which mountain? <laughs> I plan to visit him one day. <laughs> this titan lives within. He like kind of like leans his head in and like he flicks his tongue at you. <laughs> Is that what you mortals call it then? Near Silvergleam. Okay. What you know of it, there lies a sleeping titan. I will investigate there one day. Perhaps when things are a little less pressing. And he kind of bows and takes his leave. Now knowing what his true quest is, let's see the tallest To kill ever. the titan! <laughs> to not kill him, but I just want to see the tallest mother ever on the, this plane. The sovereign <laughs> of the planet. Yeah. That's how his chain of res- respect and command goes. Hell yeah. I know that uh, we are considered guests here in this realm. Rudolph seems to be a very fine and, I guess, fertile planet. It is what I know of my. It is what I know of the All Father. This realm that you stand in is merely one that I have crafted. Then it I, is a facsimile of his power. I see. Then I guess my biggest question would be. Should we not be able to stop this onrush? Might we be able to find a way to get what good people we can safely into the arms of the Allfather? Perhaps finding some sort of refuge in his realm. With my awakened form, this realm can expand so much uh, so much as if the people believe that this is a sanctuary so it shall be so all we need if you to wish do is... if you wish to evacuate any mortal within this place use this use my child's gates to usher them through thank you it's of course a last ditch effort we'd uh, really like to win this thing but... it would be great <laughs> I can bring them elsewhere, so long as my body resides. We greatly appreciate that. Just knowing that there is hope, even in the most hopeless of times, is very helpful. We all are playing our part here. Though my... Though the Grand Fay of Water may not see it as such... Camaraderie within the uh, w- uh, camaraderie of the gods is something of a rare occurrence. You are living gr- a grand history here. Hard one to, one that all of you will be a part of. Hard to imagine grander, honestly. This will prove to the gods that the mortals are once again the reason why they exist. It'll prove that their power, though it is grand, comes from you. We'll try to, we'll try to prove that point. You will need many voices to earn such a thing. My, the reason why I am here 
means that the whoever lives on this world, whoever has faith in the land they walk upon, has crafted this realm. That is a lot of voices, child. And I wish to keep them away from an incursion. As do I. Is that all you desire to know of me? I mean, I have one more, but those are my three, if anybody else... Uh... I, have a, I have a question. Uh, during our travels, Wake has off and on mentioned stories of a, of a group of unicorns that he rescued from deep under the sea, mm. and uh, we've lo since lost contact with them. I was wondering, how are they doing? Like you watch as the collective one kind of like leers its heads back, sits it sits like chin on the uh, tower. You watch as it flicks its tongue out. It actually takes like five minutes for it to like sniff out the air. It's beaconing. The tongue returns back into their mouths and it looks back down at you. The creatures you seek of they are within the arms of an Azamar. Uh, they are within the arms of an Azamar sect. <coughs> barely out of distance of my power. My sight can barely see them, but they live in a safe location. That's good. They they seemed like a a very rare sort, and I would very much like to meet them one day. Wake smiles, knowing that his Azamar friend is still alive and well. And he's just uh, and she is just barely out of the eyes of the collective one, meaning that she is somewhere in between another continent. So the ASMR are still there, but nowhere close to the collective one. So unfortunately, that's also one of the main reasons why, when Fetraeus' dad told you, all the Azamar were some sort of pinpoint to make sure that no demon incursion would happen, and, and they're too far most away. Of them died. <laughs> yeah, most of them died, and they're too. F and the ones that did survive are too far away to do anything. Well, that's the last question I had. If you had an, you had another question. If you had another question, go for it. I noticed that uh, every avatar of a god that we've run into at one point has been, at one point or another, mortal, as Ziaka appears to right now. Were you once like one of us? Just somebody trying to do their best for their chosen creator? Unlike the child standing before you, I was made. Oh. I did not have choice like she does. I am a beast made out of concept. Though... Wake's negative one intelligence is spinning <laughs> real quick. Yeah. I do bleed. It's concept art. I, I am not, I am not uh, selected away from death. I can bleed and I can die. That is something only gods... Are, f are free to be uh, to be away from. Death does not touch gods, but it does touch acolytes. It proves that in time, maybe our concepts can rot away and people can forget of us. Red just kind of like, like snickers at that. Like anyone's gonna fucking forget about land or animals. Child, there have been times where that has been an occurrence. Eons well without of your scope of reality. There is a realm where I don't exist. There is a realm where the Allfather does not exist. That is a frightening thought. Imagine if we only had boats to live on. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> there could be a universe where Kelpie exists as a body of water throughout the universe, and sailing throughout the cosmos is the only way to survive. There's just no land. That's fair. There is no land. Truly a water world. Hmm. <laughs> Kevin my Costner. <laughs> <laughs> this is a scope that the acolytes are only versed to know. You living in them, uh, you living within these realms would be alien. You would be cast aside and seen as an incursion, much like the demons. So are they just a species trying to find their own home? No, they are a species trying to destroy something that is not theirs. They're more like invaders than hopeful nomads. The mother of darkness, Usha, houses demons. Fiends, those who live in darkness, all live within her umbrella. But there are 
versions of Usha that are not as peaceful as the one that lives within uh, within this realm. This space of existence, Usha is seen as a guider for darkness, maybe as a guide of a way to, to usher those through the darkness, to show that it's not something to be feared, something to be used. These demons, however, they don't see it this way. Multiverse theory! Oh, okay. Uh, Chroma Kill kind of steps back and looks at uh, Red and Ziaka, and I guess the Skrung's passed out. I was gonna say Skrung's unconscious body. I guess. Also, do any of you guys have anything you want to say to him or ask? Not every day you get to meet with the creation of a god. I mean, Ziaka, you Z probably have a pretty open line of communication at this point, so you might not really need to. But uh. I am an acolyte. All of this that he is speaking is going through me. I guess everything we have to ask, we can ask her. Yeah. But there is one thing I will ask. You see us as your champions. Is there a way that this can be ushered within us physically? You watch as the spear once again ushers down. It doesn't spread out towards Ziaka. It instead spreads towards all of you. Oh, boy. Here we go. Gromagil stands his ground, trusting his grandpa. Wait, do, no do, you accept, do you accept the concept of the Allfather to ring with inside of you? It's even aimed at Skrung, who's just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> I know his heart. I mean... Feels like that's going to be kind of a. You actually watch. Me, oh, I'm sorry. You actually watch as the spear aims towards Skrung, but then it retracts and returns away. Yeah, he's kind of completely from a different realm entirely. A child of Heldrum. He's trying very hard to get back. I know not of Heldrum, and I know not of its customs. Me either. For me to grant power upon one who does not wish of it is an act of war. <clears throat> that is not something this realm needs, and it returns away. <laughs> it returns the spear. Will I still be welcome in the oceans? Should I accept this power? Of course, child. You were born of the water. That is not something that can be taken away. Though your body may die, the spirit comes from this realm. It will return once more to it. All right. Then wholeheartedly, I accept. And you watch as the spears proc through all of your chests. Me. It doesn't hurt. It feels invigorating. Me. It's just strange. You, you, for a bright flash of a hot second, you you like just feel the not the planet, but you feel Lasaranus as its own governing body. Just like you feel like a mountain as you stand on top of it. You're all looking out towards all of Lasaranus. Each of you now seeing a point of view from the very top of all three mountains. We're all having the biggest trip of our lives. With the blessings of the, uh, with the blessings of Udoth now brought upon you, congratulations, you all level up. Yay! Whoa! I wasn't expecting that. Nope. That's, uh, you guys did something completely optional, and it completely benefited you. figure out what I get because uh, level that, nine is an actual thing that that will occur for next time I've I also wanted to give you guys a little bit more powers for what's to come down the future that makes sense mine's good but not super exciting my ability score just this better. might be too fast but hey score. we're getting very close to the end dun, 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 dun. all right so with that the collective one kind of like retracts itself my power is versatile the All-Father's power. You have others that are willing to craft around such things. That is your whole mission, is it not? I mean, yeah. Find those that you seek. Though, I would say to you that enjoy some time while you have it. Return to those that you've seen once before. Would you like to enter the end game? Yes, Pre no. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> more, yeah, more pretty much. This, this is Save more. Now. This There's is no this turning is, back. Yeah, more or less. This is 
turn back now. If you go forward, you're just pretty much fucking reacting the entire end of the game. You get the feeling that if you open this door, you will not be coming back through it. Yep. Uh, so pretty much the collective one, after giving you this blessing, the spear kind of like jets out from your body. There's no hole. There's no puncture wound. Uh, you all feel the might of the earth from all of La Saranis now surging within you. The concept of land has gre has given you a bit of a blessing. Glad I gave Ziaka the floor. She invited us to get a level up. Uh, so with that, uh, the collective one like turns its heads away. If all goes wrong, know that you still have know that you still have us to assist you. May it not come to that though. And you watch as the heads disappear and the body descends away from from sight. You are now just looking out from uh, uh, where the collective one was standing. You see the pillar, but now you like see like this weird, almost like multiple sun like gleaming, not like sunlight, but like multiple suns, like half a sun on one end and half a sun on the other in different spots. Hmm. Almost like you're looking into a uh, a dwarf. Not what is it? A lunar? Not a, a solar eclipse? Right, you're looking okay. at like one half of a solar man. eclipse. Uh, you may return out from this portal, and uh, Ziaka pretty much ushers to you all that it will take you back towards uh, towards the cove. All right. Well, we, with all that's said and done, I feel like uh, this Wake's going to take a big look around this area, breathe in its airs one more time, and step through the portal. You watch as a bird staring at you, like a giant toucan with like almost a dire beak. <laughs> Wakes, wakes smiles, remembering Jahal Cove, and steps through the portal. Before leaving, Chromagale just kind of, like, releases a few spores out. I wonder what will come of these. And just leaves. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you just jerked off in God's house. <laughs> I didn't jerk <laughs> off at his house. I just, you know. Left your seeds. Just left. Left your babies. Left some children. <laughs> Oh no, I've accidentally corrupted all of the land by You're a good guy. Yeah. You're not technically a corruption, but you might be a plague. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I have to do this. No, I'm not I'm not questioning. It was going to be just an inno innocent whatever. He's just leaving some spores to float off in the wind and see where they go. Would you like a red sharpie? <laughs> No, I'll be fine. Maybe hear about the land a little bit from a distant descendant one day. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> with all that said and done, you step back through the archway, and you return to uh, the ziggurat. There is now way more people here now. You are now actually standing before an entire... All of uh, Ziaka's entourage. They're all now standing there at the portal just waiting... Like, they were all sitting there as, as if waiting for you to return. Ziaka looks to all of them. The All-Father has spoken. Our efforts were not in vain. The Earth is on our side. And all of, like, all of the, like, all of the Yanti kind of, like, lift their hands up in a prayer-like motion. And they all let out, like, this, like, almost this humming hiss. Like a choir. Bzzzed. The portals then, Mistress, are they done? Yes. She then turns and looks to the, to the lot of you. Wake nods. We have been imparted with knowledge. Our destination, she actually turns and looks to the side. All of you don't need to roll perception checks as she points out the location. The collective one has given you an exact pinpoint where Avast is. You now have the collective idea of where Avast is and where Mead and his crew and all the pirates are. We basically pinpointed their location. Now. Yep. So you now know their location. From here, it is a day's travel by boat. Oh, well, that's that's convenient. However, so. however, uh, Ziaka also knows that it'll be a very dangerous day. Yes, it is a very dangerous trip. Uh, she pretty much looks to you all and says, "It might be best of you to gather as many forces you deem might be necessary. Maybe return. Have any unfinished business you have." This definitely is the yeah. you know, finish every side quest. Yep. Yep. Uh, if you have any unfinished business, if you wish to speak to anyone else before it is time, gather your friends, gather your allies. The final battle is upon us. Well, then we 
We're definitely going to have to ponder on this one. <laughs> yep. Uh, so basically what's happening now is that the Ziaka pretty much gives you the know-it-all to uh, triangulate uh, any location that has a realm gate that you can travel between. So what that means We've is... We've unlocked fast travel! Yep, you have unlocked... I mean, at level 9 is when pretty much all the teleportation spells come into play, too. Ah. Yep. yep. At You at now have fast travel to Jahal Cove, Wright, Gulliver, and back to Bluey Camp. Right is going to be useful because I feel like that's where almost everyone is. <laughs> yeah. I will say this. You have a lot more allies than you think. Well, we have that ghost army that went out to go spread yeah. our message. Uh, so with that, now is a good time to actually take a break so you guys can ponder on what you want to do next. Sounds good. I also added up my levels. I got less than I thought. I can now run on walls and across water, but that other okay. part doesn't sound very useful to me. Scrung <laughs> finally wakes up. Ah! Oh, God, what happened? <laughs> Looks around to everyone else. We'll be right <laughs> back after this. I Scrum can't catch a break. I get a better proficiency bonus. With yes, my everybody gets a like that. That's the biggest thing at level mm -hmm. nine is you get you finally get one up on your proficiency bonus. I will yep. say this: don't worry too much about like uh, upgrading any of your skills right this second because there's going to be no combat, and if there is, it's. Fucking theater of the mind. You guys are level nine. Who the fuck's gonna stop you? <laughs> well, to be fair, my my the only thing I really get is flavor. Anyway, I can now Prince of Persia wall run. Ooh. Nice. I get access to my level three spells, so I'm gonna look at those. Later. Yep. So congratulations, guys. You've made Ziaka a fucking acolyte. <laughs> Ziaka made Ziaka an acolyte. We just got her there. <laughs> uh, I'll pretty much say this: that her entire plan was to get you guys to while she was taking care of this to just get whatever fraction of uh, the Collective One to Mead as a little bit of a, you know, insurance booster to make sure that you could probably take care or at least do some kind of damage to, uh, to Garland. Uh, now, however, you guys not only have a stronger way to do that, but you also have a plan B if something goes south. Yes, I, I wanted to ensure that yeah. we had a way to, you know, if everything goes bad, people off this planet well, maybe you know at least, at least if a, we at just least tried a, to bring them all here not off the planet but off the continent anyway yeah, at least a couple thousand you can you can prop based on what you just did you can probably save if not 85 to 90 percent of the south sea that's good that's you know what that is way better that's, toll than yeah, i expected yeah that's that's quite a big number but go you're go probably on. not going to save all those who really don't like udoth that's you know what that's on them <laughs> they can choose that thing. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the table. Uh, so, you all have been given a choice. Uh, you now have fast travel to go back to any town to take care of any unfinished business and to take those along with you. I will say this, because, again, bookkeeping is a thing I need to be, be sure, and whatever you decide what you're going to do going forward will have some huge repercussions and or consequences and or karmic balance. Right. Uh... I am allowing you, including yourselves, you can have a party of eight. That's how big your ship can fit. Okay. So us three and five more NPCs, essentially. And five more NPCs. You are open to go back to Jahal Cove, Wright, Gulliver, and Bluey Camp, which is what we're just going to call this portal for now because yeah. it's simpler. Uh, you have that option. However, Morgan... Uh, Linda's been sitting here the whole time. Yeah. Uh, Linda now kind of just like stands before you and you hear her voice speak to you as she like puts her hand on your shoulder. Oh, now she talks. Yeah. Well, she only talks when there's touch. <laughs> is my is my job done? It is. I ask one favor then. What's bury that? bury me back within the campsite of which I died so that I may live in peace with the spirits of those who have died with me. Fair enough. <clears throat> so, uh, Linda has asked you to please take her remains back to the camp. Will you guys do so? Well, that's something you can do yeah. while you're in Bluey camp. Yeah, that's something I obviously will divulge to everyone else. It's like, uh, I think Linda's done, guys, and she needs to be buried back at the camp. It's the least we can do. I think that's fair. I, I understand we are a little... We've got some dire things coming up and uh, need to use our time to prep, but... 
So it would be right to, to give her a, a decent rest after the help she gave us. While you were at Bluey Camp, I will say this. You are given the option to choose on your team Red, Ziaka, or Skrung. Uh, Red being a wild magic sorcerer, Ziaka being an old one warlock, and Skrung being an inquisitive rogue. So you have those three options to choose from on your party as of right now. If you right. wanted to collect anyone from Bluey Camp. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we're definitely going to take them back to right at the very least. Well, well Ziaka is our method of transportation. No, she's not. She's uh, She pretty much just said, like, hey... My entire collective, like the collective of the auntie, are now guarding these places. Gotcha. So you can travel between them so long as the collective is there. You don't exactly need her to go back. Mm. Yeah, we we know these places are safe because she's left her. She yeah. Her, entourage. her entire entourage of people traveling with her was basically like, all right, set up a perimeter. This base is now ours. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, we're also gonna take uh, Voltara and Micha with us back to right. Almost yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of those like I feel like even before we start really gathering and writing down like here's who's coming with us, you should I, see who's there. D- not only that, I would also like to get everybody home. <laughs> like the the people who aren't coming with us, I want to know we're leaving them where they. Uh, yeah, Scrung needs to get yeah. back to right so he can, <laughs> at the very least, figure out what's going on with that teleportation spell that Bork got Be- him. Because here's the thing, uh, this entire fucking like section is pretty much just like, hey, everyone who stuck around this entire fucking campaign. Here's all the warriors. <laughs> yeah, let's let's check in on our, our let's check in on our good pals. <laughs> our our uh, thirteen darknesses and seven lights. We're gonna go talk to all of them real quick and uh, get all these pieces on the on the board. I will claim this though. Uh, there is something optional that will happen should you remain in the same lo- in remain in a certain location. <gasps> oh. I won't say what, but I will say depending on your location that you pick. Something optional can occur. Gotcha. I feel like that's D and D in general. Uh, yeah, I was gonna. Like, I was something gonna say it might happen if you're somewhere. <laughs> well, depending yes. depending I, on the location I, you wish to stay at. I, I think what he's saying is like there's also a possibility that rushing around and going everywhere isn't the right choice. Yeah. Um, the the clock is always ticking. Yeah. Um. Well, I would. I would definitely. I I think burying Linda right away mm-hmm. since we're already. Kind of not very far from there. Yeah. Seems like the the right thing to do. You wish just to do that? Out, just out the gate, personally. Yeah. Wake, yeah. how do you feel? I mean, Wake's got a lot of things running through his head right now. Uh, he has obviously no real personal connection to Linda. He doesn't feel like, you know, bearing her's a bad thing or anything, mm-hmm. but he also thinks that maybe the Blueies could do that. <laughs> okay. But Wake... Uh, <laughs> understands that Morgan would want to do this personally. So. Here's the thing. We can split the party. That's very oh, true. Man. We can split. That's not a problem here. Yeah. Wake is going to stay at Bluey Camp for a moment and just, you know, inform uh, Misha and Voltara about what's been ongoing and okay. basically what the plan is from here while you and potentially you go off and yeah. bury Linda. All right, so do you mind if I skip to them real quick? Go for it. All right, so you two decide it might be very prudent to go ahead and bury uh, Linda. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So retracing your steps with the assistance of Renfang, since you know he kind of you guys helped him out. Yeah, uh, it's on the way back. He can show you where the campsite is with no problem. He takes you back to the campsite and he tells you, "All right, if you follow this path back this way, you'll find the campsite again." So he fucks off with Wake to go take care of that. Uh, you two now approach the pathway that leads over towards where the campsite was. Mm-hmm. Uh, the smell of blood is still kind of fresh because of all the stuff that you guys attacked before. Uh, the smell of rotting flesh is still there because it's still the place that didn't get cleaned up. And there's a lot of burnt uh, wood smell because of the fact that you guys set the place on fire to baptize the, the Blar guest to go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need all of both of you to roll me a perception check. Okay. Ooh. Uh, 22. <laughs> 12. 12? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Morgan doesn't hear this. However, Chromagill, something, uh, something feels a little odd to you as, like, you get the sense of all, like, the, oh, you get all the senses that you've received from, like, the hitting your, hitting your flesh because it mm-hmm. all goes through your pores. Mm-hmm. There's something else added to it, and you start hearing sounds and because of your cloak 
uh, you're actually able to hear a very maddened voice kind of just like running around in, in haste. Uh, there's something in the camp, and it sounds very worried and very hushed, uh, very uh, rushed. We're not alone here in this camp. There's someone here, and they're, they seem perturbed. Maybe they're mm. uh, kind of frantic <clears throat> almost, like they're looking for something. Uh, I will, with that roll, I'll go ahead and just mutter this so you get an idea of what's going on. Soulbrand here. Soulbrand here. Where everyone else? No, Soulbrand said he's here. <laughs> I don't... Was he supposed to be able to understand any of that? <laughs> you were, you were, no, no, he was, no, with that okay, role, he's okay, not supposed okay. to, but okay. that was what you got. Okay. That was not supposed to be very well heard. It sounds like someone's... It, I get the impression someone's looking for something nearby. We might want to be a little careful with where we tread. We don't know if they're friends or... Hmm. Well, given the fact that you... I'm guessing you understood it. It's something from this plane, so it might not be the Blargast. And it's true. I did feel... Let's well, just, that was a straight perception check. That yeah. wasn't like him going focusing through Focusing in on the Yeah, words. focusing on something. <clears throat> hmm. uh, at this point, you're like halfway through the trail. You haven't gotten to the camp yet, but yeah. Chromagill heard that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say let's just be a little bit more wary and, and careful of our steps. Yeah, I agree. Uh, how will you do this? Are you going to stealth in? I do, yes. Yep. All right, roll stealth. <laughs> 12. 18. I'm a little less stealthy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. Uh, Morgan, you and Linda are able to keep yourselves fairly low within the greenery of the uh, area. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, Chromagill is kind of the size of a tree and uh, kind of like lumbers his way through. You guys see nothing at the camp as you peek through the grass. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't seem too inhabited. Roll one more perception check. Go for there it. I am. That is a 17. Uh, so, obviously, the fire was there. It left a trail of ash sitting in the center of the entire campsite. Mm -hmm. There are obvious trails of something on four feet, on four legs, mucking through the uh, ash. There is, there is a blatant, obvious trail that something has moved through the ash in the floor. Mm -hmm. Now, with my roll, am I able to see the direction of the trail of the ash? Yes. It looks like it leads in from where you guys entered. Mm -hmm. And then whatever is there starts scrambling around erratically. And then it's all of a sudden starts moving north towards where the campsite used to be. Where, like, the tent and the uh, rotten trail is. The, uh, the cage full of rotten bodies. Hmm. I'm definitely going to continue, like, continue, do another <laughs> stealth roll and try to continue making um, our way to the campsite. Okay. Uh, you're going to have to roll me a stealth with disadvantage because you're op you're walking out into an open field. Yeah, unless... Would the, uh, would the blessing from the Collective One restore hit points, spell yeah. slots, and everything? Okay. Yeah, you're all back up to full. Then if I'm all back you know up what? to full, then... Shoot, but I can't. I don't know if I can do that on another person. I left my cards at the office. Um, if you know what, I'll just do the disadvantage roll because I think I can only target myself with invisibility. It's a touch spell. No, it's a touch spell. You could target anyone. Really? Yeah. One person though. One. Per that's the thing. One person. Um, <laughs> what would be more alarming for whatever we're coming up on? You walking around with a big mushroom, or you walking around with a big skeleton, or a big skeleton, or a skeleton and a big mushroom walking in together? <laughs> So a skeleton and a mushroom walked into the oh. camp. <laughs> so there's that. That's the same roll. So okay, so seven plus four. That is an 11 on the stealth with disadvantage. Okay. You walk into the campsite. Mm -hmm. You kind of like arch yourself forward trying to see if there's like any sort of difference or any things around you that seems off. Mm -hmm. Beyond the tracks, you can't see if there's anything else. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Uh, you're walking towards the ash pile at this point. Okay. Nothing has occurred. All right. 
Now, since we are technically in the campsite, does it... <laughs> I hold. I quickly hold Linda's hand. Do you have to be buried at the tent, or is the campsite fine? She points at the tent. Okay. All right. She points uh, at the origin point where she died. Is the is the trail leading to like the tent that we? Yes. Were? Okay. Uh, Morgan, you you stay back. I'm I'm going to check this out. I kind of like I motions got... motions to himself. I know it'll be tougher for me to hide, so I'm just going to walk in there and see what we're dealing with. I got your back, big guy. So you just, just walk on in. He he goes over to the tent. Uh, I'm going to try and like, can I like take a look, peer in, maybe I guess somewhat stealth my way into it, but just um, basically. If you're gonna try and stealth your way towards the tent, go ahead and roll a stealth check. But if you just want to brazenly get up there and see if there's anything inside, that's a perception check. Okay. Uh, still gonna stealth just in case it's a friggin' demon in there waiting for us to to jump. Uh, I have a 14 in stealth. I'm just going to kind of like poke my head in. Oh, good. Uh, so you don't even need to stop yourself there because all of a sudden you start hearing rumbling and like almost like this weird, like goopy sound coming from the cage. The The mound of bodies is shivering. Uh, This is, I'm... This doesn't seem like something I'm familiar with. <laughs> Uh, this <laughs> group of bodies are kind of moving. Maybe they're... No, they're not. <laughs> they're, they're shivering. Come you you hear that. So we go in. No, they're not. But, wait. Who's there? I rolled in that one, so this thing's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You waked yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I walk over to the apparently trembling bodies. Who's there? And I just kind of like... Toss the bodies. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna no, rummage through corpses. Nobody there. Go away. No one there. No one there. I. Are you gone yet? I said you go away. I focus on the silver tongue. If there's someone in there, it would definitely be better for them to come out than to keep trying to hide from us. I don't mean them any harm. And I'm doing this with a persuasion. <laughs> with the. Additional plus 10 on my silver tongue. That's going to be a, a good old 28. Yeah, they rolled a 17. They weren't beating this. <laughs> Wait, you not with Pack saying you're not hurt? What does that mean? That mean nothing. That What did that mean? Oh, I'm coming out now. You watch as like a limb rises up and a bloodied uh, blar guest in a cape kind of just like peers up. Hi. Oh, uh, hello. You, uh... Were it's you, a greater bar guest, so it's in its goblinoid form. Were you one of the ones who kind of like point to the destruction? Did you do this? No, Slobon not do this. That was the alpha. Okay. Uh, it's Morgan. You, you are the you are the weirdest bar guest I ever seen. The oh, weirdest! I'm, I'm not a. I am not one of those. You what? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to give you that impression. I'm I'm a fungus. <laughs> Roll deception. <laughs> oh, well, oh, no. so much for that. I already used that silver tongue bonus. Uh, that's a nat one. He does, uh, I, I don't think I'm really deceiving. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know what? That's fair. Uh, you know what? Instead of a deception, what, uh, what would you would you? I do guess here? it would have been persuasion. Yeah, I, go I, ahead. Roll I, it again. I, I'm sorry. I, well, I mean, I'll, I'll still accept the roll since I rolled for it and I have the same bonuses and everything. But, okay, fair enough. But it's like... I, I'm completely willing to have the concept of me saying, no, I'm not part of your pack. I'm just a friendly other creature. And that <laughs> idea is not getting through to him. Mm. Never heard mushroom before. Slow by not know what mushroom is. Yeah, I know what you are. You are a person and you have skeleton. Why do you have skeleton? That's a long story. I need story. I need story so I can tell pack. I can tell alpha. I can tell everything. She was, she was a researcher who was part of this camp and the alpha killed her. She wished to be buried with her friends. <laughs> Slobon know what necromancy is. Slobon always uh, dabbles in it. He waves his hand and things rise up from the grave. Neat. That yes. sounds like what you do. Very neat! <laughs> like one eye pops open. Oh, God. <laughs> wild eyes. We... Yeah, yeah, like one wild eye. <laughs> mm. So what do you want? 
Why you want? Why you talk to Slobon? Not every pack saying I'm not supposed to talk to Slobon. Well, Slobon. I'm not supposed to talk to myself. Slobon, I'm very happy you talked to us. It's given me this opportunity to talk to a creature I've never talked with before. You, you're the first. It's true. You are first too. And you watch as like this weird raggedy zip, uh, zip, zip line tail like goes back and forth behind them. And see, we don't need to fight each other. We don't need to sneak around or or do any sort of harm. We just want to to lay our friend here to rest and let her let her feel that her job is done. Is that okay with you? Will she not be bothered if we leave her here? Slobon have fever? I don't I don't think she'd appreciate that. Slobon like bones. You give bones Slobon friend forever. Oh, oh no! Your Sophie's choice. <laughs> we could have a demon on our side with necromancy powers if we decide to not bury this skeleton who helped us. Oh man, making a deal with a demon. This seems like a. <laughs> this seems like a bad call. Like, I, I, but okay. here's the thing. I am always the guy who wants to get the non-humans in his party. So as soon as I hear this, I'm like, oh, we could have a real menagerie going on. Hmm. And what did Linda do for us, really? <laughs> she was there. I'm, I'm just, I'm just the devil. I'm just the devil on your left. Hmm. And I feel like Slobon will use soul very good. This seems like bad karma. I don't like this. I think I got something. I think this is the renegade route. I think it is. <laughs> And, and we've sent the two, well, I'm not going to say the two, because I guess I don't exactly know what, where Morgan stands, but Chromagill is definitely going to be against almost any renegade options. Right, right, right. Unless you find some way to trick him. Uh, I, mm. I still have my con man's ring. Oh, mm. how will we play this then? Here's my logic. Slowbon, is it? Yeah. Wait, how, how did you know that? Oh, right, I told you. How do you know my name? Slowbon told Morgan. Morgan now knows that Slobon knows necromancy. Yes? And Slobon now know that you, Morgan! Yes. Who your tribe? <laughs> we've, sh what? we've shared our knowledge. What do you mean, but? I don't like buts. Buts normally mean I get hit with something. Morgan will not hit Slobon. <gasps> his eyes widen, his mouth agape, and his tail is wagging a million miles an hour. But since Slobon knows necromancy, you know about pacts. Yes? Yeah. I made pact with Skeleton. I must fulfill my end of the bargain, sadly. You must understand that. I think we're getting a little advanced for this guy. And what does that, that give like you? It was uh, advantage on uh, persuasion. Roll it. I think technically we're well within the power of giving him what he's asking for, and we're just going like, but I can't. It's my job. I mean, you could probably push this even further because he only rolled a four. <laughs> That's a 22. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. You have to make packs. Packs, packs good because sometimes packs mean that you get to go to other places and then eat more flesh. Do you like to eat flesh, Morgan man? Does he like to eat flesh? Oh. That's a good question. I don't even have a mouth. However, if it provides How sustenance. does he speak? Eek! What does that mean? Mine. It's in here, I say. In this <laughs> Intimidation <case>. check. <laughs> 14. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, when you say that, he just looks at you and goes... He like, he like spits a fireball at your feet. So what? No, I was just telling you. Mind overrated. <laughs> you you not think? You think only with good things, and good thing is always madness. Hmm. Madness always could. Hmm. It lets me do things. So, wait, then. If madness is always good, <laughs> then is good always madness? No, that's stupid. Madness is anything. <laughs> oh. Oh. Madness is anarchy. I guess so much for transitive property. Yeah. I, uh... But he's paying attention to yeah. you at this point. <laughs> Can I f fulfill my pact, please? From one necromancer to another. Can we begin pact first? What Wait, is you, you pact? Wa you want a pact? Well, one pact begets another pact. 
Make the logistics longer. Make the scroll bigger. Make loopholes open. He's like connivingly like just tapping he's, his paws together. He seems like he's trying to scheme, but he's not. Also, does not strike me as the brains of the outfit. Yeah, roll it. Roll an insight check on this man. Both of us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fourteen for me. That is a. 17 plus 4, 21. You get the sense that this guy's kind of like the slow ball on a lot of the Blargast. This is the guy they leave behind. Mm. We just, <laughs> I just look at Chrome McGill. This guy. Yeah, th this is the... Okay, so remember Finding Dory, the the Gerald, the the one like unibrow fucking like uh, uh, sea lion that wants to sit on the rock and the other ones scream at him to get off? Uh-huh. That's this guy. So he's he's just the he's kind of the the dummy runt of the group. Yes, mm -hmm. you pretty much have found the dummy runt who was left behind. I am open to suggestions. <laughs> I say, uh... Slowbon open packed. Do you want packed? The skeleton one packed. I want to eat skeleton. So packed, not good. Well, we're going to bury this skeleton here because it's it's where she belongs and it's where she gets to rest. However. You say you like bones, do you? Yeah. <laughs> you got bones? I want to eat them. Where we're going is going to be very dangerous. We might even be fighting a lot of your kind, but there's a very real chance there will be a lot of bones left in our path or ahead of us. Persuasion. I don't know why I'm convincing this <laughs> demon to come with us. There's no reason. Ah, oh, my persuasion is not very good though, so he might not even bother. That's a three. And uh, oh as far boy. as I know, my silver tongue can only be activated not once. Yeah. Can't beat up. Can't beat up, friend. No, can't. Can't beat up pack member. Not not allowed. Not allowed. Gabrasu come and beat you up. If that happened, they kill you, and then they take you back to realm and make you sit there and take punishment. And no and that's not fun. N is no it? bones for anyone would happen. I want bones now. If you could promise to behave yourself, we could give you bones, but you're gonna have to help us stop your friends. <laughs> His eyes are bugging out. <laughs> this guy is so conflicted. If, He's if just, you stick with us, like, we'll, do our, he, we'll do our best to not let them punish you. You you watch as he takes uh, he takes one of his claws and starts like scraping one side of his arm and he's like reaching into the bone at this point. I really don't know if he'll be able to get along with the rest of our friends though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally half tempted to just kill this thing. <laughs> I don't. Either that or just scare him away. Slowbon get, slowbon, slowbon get bones. He tell you things. He give you power. See, Madness. I... Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said something I liked, but then threw in a little bit more of the sentence, and I didn't like it anymore. <laughs> Why not like madness? Who doesn't like madness? It's comforting to slowbon. Well, it's the opposite of comfort to me. It makes me very uncomfortable. That makes you a weird demon. Yeah, I would be a very weird demon, yes. <laughs> Slobon, you're not- Because of because of his roles, he's uh, he's not on the up and up that you guys are not like yeah. fiendish in any way. Mm-hmm. Here's uh, <laughs> Morgan, he's not he's not causing any active harm, so I feel like li he lifts up his leg, which is like a wolf leg, like digigrade style, and he starts biting on it. Like I don't, I don't think we should just kill him. But at the same time, I really don't, I really don't know if bringing him to other people is a good idea. No, it is <laughs> not a good idea, Chroma Gill. <laughs> Slow bond, good with friends. I heard that he's out of the cage and behind you guys. Uh, does seem crafty, which makes me, which puts me more in the camp. Slowbon do all kinds of magic. He do this. Watch. Gone. Well, th now that's pretty helpful. That's really handy. Are you still around he, here? He returns back inside the cage, but when he re-enters, a burst of fire erupts around him and the cage just blows away. You see, that's fun. And that's a... Was that fire? And it can make fire. We could use that against, you know, his kind. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I got. To I'm so happy I wrote this character. This is. Uh... 
Look, look, I have a finite amount of time on this realm, so a lot of these decisions don't really matter to me. <laughs> so this is basically on you. I'm just gonna help you make whatever decision you want happen. Slowbot, we're going to we're going to bury this skeleton here. You are not to touch any of her bones. If I find out you do, you will be punished, and there will be no bones for you. If you leave them alone and come with us, and make sure you don't hurt anyone we ask you not to. There might be bones in it for you. But there's a very real chance there will be no Slow bones for you if you don't come with us. Slowbon agree to maybe most of this contract. But Slowbon wants something to wants something first. If Slowbon gets thing, Slowbon is service to you. Then what does Slowbon want? A piece of your soul. I I'm afraid I can't do that, Slobon. I don't, that's not, that is not something I am willing to bargain with. It is the most easiest thing you could possibly do. All I do is just maybe bite a little bit on your finger, drink away some of your soul, and then you become part of Slobon, and then when you die, Slobon keeps you. Morgan, how much of a soul do you still have? Uh, He's nothing but soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then never mind. I, I understood your properties almost entirely opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not want power of madness? Slowbon can give you that. It's great boon. Especially when the same show up. The same are <sighs> garbage. God, this makes me really upset that Chromagill is like an opposite character to me as a player. Because <laughs> I would I would be either he's coming with us or I don't know. Let's see if Renfang wants to give him a little soul and see what kind of powers that gives the blueies. But <laughs> man, that seems, that seems that's, 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 that's a little <laughs> neutral evil of you there, ex Chromagill. Exactly. Like that's, and that's what, <laughs> I would do. Yeah. That's not what Chromagill would do. Dagon would totally yeah, do that. Yeah, exactly. If I was playing as Dagon right now, oh boy, I'd have so many things for this guy. Uh, roll an Arcana check, Morgan. But, you've sent, but since Chromagill came along with this, he is going to be like, I think we should leave this guy alone. That's 22, Chief. Uh, Dagon would have traded Linda in a heartbeat. Oh, this, for sure. This guy feels like... He's not on the up and up. He knows about contracts, but he doesn't know the finite details. You feel like there's a way you could fleece him. Hmm. Like, this is not impossible to fleece him. He feels like a goon. He knows that you have power, and he knows that you have numbers. He just doesn't know how that's utilized. So you, you, you like madness, don't you? It brings you warmth to your infernal heart. Wouldn't it be fun to punish the people who punished you? As an act of vengeance? And... What's more maddening than the field of battle? Persuasion. <laughs> no bonuses. Okay. No bonuses. No bonuses. Okay. No advantage. Okay. No advantage. That is an eighteen. He got a five. He agrees. He's like nodding his head. Then join us on the field of battle. How do I? Okay, but I need something to contract. I need something to prove that this is a contract. It's the only way this works. Well, ooh, I still have. I <laughs> just have. You just need. You just need a, a simple, a collateral, an, an object. Yes, that the big. You have nice big words. <laughs> Matches my big frame. <laughs> You're I, fat. Well, ow. Anyway. <laughs> He's actually zero percent body fat. <laughs> I'm all. Pl it's it's different from my kind. It's a sponge, basically. I'm sorry, that delivery. Uh, ooh, I have an idea. I have something that could be of value to him, but I'm going to have to spin it I, if you've got something that I, I, you I got just this, like. I got this. Morgan digs into his pouch and holds up a chromatic round. Oh, my. Not one of those, Morgan. Deception. 15. <laughs> the fact that you got to roll <laughs> What do you mean? What that? What that? What that? Yeah, let me see. Wait, no. Contract, what do? Just join us in the field of battle. And when the battle's over, you're free to go. You can't give him one of those. He keeps not actively not giving any details. Just not that, Morgan. It's too precious. Well, I rolled a nat one. He takes it. So, we're in, so we're in agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow on that contract now. All right. Give me one sec. Linda! 
<laughs> Hold on. Go ahead and sleep. Just <laughs> dig the dig a, a small grave. Wait, slow bond, do that. <laughs> Just hand Linda a shovel, make her dig her own grave. <laughs> what <laughs> shovel? And with that, Linda looks to you and nods her head. Morgan still she, like, she Before she sits down in the pile, uh, she looks to you and she points <laughs> over to like the wall behind uh, behind the campsite. And she like takes, she goes to grab for your hand. Grabs it. Something for your kindness and your trouble. And with that, the skeleton falls apart. We got a reward over there. I was waiting for her to go. I thought she was going to point at slow on. This is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you go behind the uh, yeah. the wall? Okay. Behind the wall, there, roll an investigation check. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Slobon now sits like... Like, dog, but he's more goblinoid than he is, like, dog. So he's, like, sitting on all fours right next to Chromagill's leg. That's a 15 on hey, the little investigation. Buddy. Uh, there is a box. Uh, there, instead, of a, instead of a brick, there is a loose box sitting in one of the slots. Pull it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, you can open it. There's no okay. problem. There looks like a ceremonial dagger that is coated in gold. This looks very pricey. Ooh. The hilt of the, the hilt of the ceremonial dagger has the mouth of a serpent on it, and you now know this serpent as the collective one. Mm. A religious artifact, perhaps. Maybe I should show this to Ziaka when we get back. Ooh, I bet she'd love it. Congratulations, you have just found the optional character for Bluey Camp, Slobon. Yeah. <laughs> And now we make our way to camp. <laughs> we head back. So what are we gonna wait? What are we gonna tell him? Don't everybody? kill him. He's slow. What are we, what are we gonna tell him? Good that he can't run. <laughs> Not that slow. Like no. Just look at him. What like medium slow? Mm. All right. When you, so fast. when you say that, when you're looking at him and you go, wait, how slow? Yeah, my hand is on fire right now. <laughs> he's right next to you. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so he's actually really fast, but. Reaching slowly for some lantern oil. <laughs> but, he's, but he's made a deal with us, and he's not going to hurt anyone because we traded him a very, very precious item that Morgan doesn't even want to talk about. It's so great. I just pull white to side. He's basically cannon fodder I used a chromatic round as a bargaining chip. And you don't think for a second that he'll betray you in the heart of battle? What are we talking about, friends? We're talking about you betraying us in the heart of battle. Why would I do that? I made a pact! And they're unbreakable. Demons. He couldn't even betray us, even if he wanted to. It's crazy. It's madness. It's <gasps> yes! I love madness. I love madness. He licks your arm. Oh, my soul? <laughs> yeah, he, he licks it. Ah, to God, oh, no, that felt weird. You felt that. That felt weird. That felt. That felt at all, which is weird, but it also felt weird. So Val- it's like double Valta- weird. Valtara has her book out, and fucking uh, Mitra has her light, uh, her pistol at the ready. That, that, yeah. It's at the first sign of trouble, we'll figure out what to do with him. Yeah, we'll figure out what to do with him. Yeah. No. He points over at Wake. <laughs> first part of this pack, can he stay with you know five foot? <laughs> Five foot radius. I can be anywhere. See, watch this. Snaps his finger. 30 feet away, he's sitting on a tree. That is a good distance. Snaps his finger. 30 feet right next to Morgan. You know what? Fine. Right there. <laughs> his hip. You and he. Good. Snaps his finger. He's sitting. He's right next to you, side by side, doing the same pose as you. Well, I... <laughs> he is to your waist, by the way. He's goblin-sized. I will well, not hesitate. <laughs> The thing is, Slobon, you made a pact with Morgan, so Morgan gets to decide where you are. Yeah, stick close to me, fella. <clears throat> He's sitting on your back. You wouldn't happen to have, like... He's panting like a dog. If I swear to God, if he speaks backwards. <laughs> <laughs> he has some incredible magic capabilities. Morgan might be able to pick up something from him at the very least. It just felt wrong to kill him, Wake. So but it also alpha? felt wrong to leave him with the blueies. We can sh- we can show you where the alpha is. 
Don't do that. I hate his guts so much. Well, I wish can... he was dead. Well, we can show you where a better alpha is. Hi, I'm Wake. <laughs> I was mostly referring to the fact that we have several places to go and lots of people to meet, but I need to do some researches on proper nouns. Do I, so do I get do, do I get to eat time. bones of fat dinosaur? Why not? Only fallen foe. Oh, when does something die? Soon. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot sooner if you don't keep quiet, because we're the only two in this camp who want you on our so side right now. You're going to have to convince them. I'm still very confused as to what exactly is happening. Well, so we got her back to the camp, and... <laughs> oh, by the way, is Yaka in, in the camp, or is she with the... Uh, every the... fucking Yanti in this camp is on pins and needles, along with every kobold. By the way, Ziaka, we found this. Oh. Like, Ziaka... <laughs> oh, cute little tchotchke. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah Ziaka, like takes, takes it and looks at it. she was, like, it. also obsessed with gold, so I feel like seeing a... Blade made I out she, of I it. I think she made past that. Okay, actually. Well. good for her. Yeah, like she, she, like you think, like you personally. Yeah, wait. I, I guess I wouldn't know that. The moment but. you fucking watch as Ziaka looks at this gold dagger, she just picks it up. Hmm. Now, I, I remember very specifically, she was fighting that urge very hard, which is why when she went back to her people, there was a there was a big thing about that. Hmm. A very nice artifact indeed. I'm certain that if it is money you're after, we can pay you for this. Does it, does it do anything cool? It's simply a dagger used for sacrificial purposes. I... Sacrifices. Uh... Oh, no, no. Nothing intelligent. No, no, I'm no heavens, no. Ah, all right. Goats of the like, sort of that. No, I get it. An animal you sacrifice gotta eat sometimes. Group. Well, she like kind of like does like the snake yawn. Mm. <laughs> oh, I remember. So this compensation for the new set of hands. <laughs> he is a demon. Yeah, that's that's. What do you gain? What do you plan to? Red looks to you, and what do you plan to gain from this, Mister Strong? Uh, Mister Morgan. Uh, I just don't. Have, I did. I didn't have the heart to kill him. Hey, Red. Well, there maybe be anybody back at right that might be able to go into that thing's brain and maybe figure out what's going on with the, uh, maybe learn something about the other side from it. She, like, looks back to one of the Yanti and, like, hisses an order to it. The Yanti returned with, uh, with manacles. <laughs> Way ahead of you. She cuffs Slobon. <laughs> Look at this new madness you have to play with. Isn't that fun? Ooh, I love it! What does he do? What do I have to do? If you just frame everything in madness, he seems really into it. I, I think we might have might the, quite the guy to introduce him to then <laughs> at some point in time. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I get to kill something and uh, eat the bones. Slowbomb will do whatever you ask. I don't think that'll be a problem. Good. When does it happen? Sooner than I expect, I bet. <laughs> Persuasion. Twelve. Fuck you, Slowbot. How bad are you at rolls? Worse than awake. <laughs> okay, fine. Now remember, you have to stay next to Morgan. Just picture him just <laughs> holding out his hand. The, the, yeah. the manacles are around your neck right now. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he like he like holds his little little hands gingerly at you. Take my hands. If you see weird visions, don't blame me. I'm holding hands. <laughs> you see? Sure is. Look at him. His tail is way wagging, his tongue's lapped out of the side of his mouth. I think Nedra's going to love him, frankly, but... Just because he's a demon doesn't mean he's a bad guy. Oh my god, he reminds me of my dog as a boy. Did it... Oh. I'm part wolf! And see, something in there's got to be at least capable of loyalty, right? I mean, it seems to be holding... The other bitch comes wrong! I don't like that. And that <laughs> was a different one. And I didn't have to make a pact with my dog. <laughs> yep, you have now collected Slovon as an optional character. Okay. Hey. All right, well, 
I guess in two weeks we'll be going around and trying to <laughs> cover up some, because while you were doing this, I was basically writing down every person that I remember on these islands that we can go to. Uh, I have a, a list. A lot of them are written down as Bird Knight and Seagull Girl. <laughs> I, have so a I need some, I, I need to do some uh, homework. Homework on remembering everybody. That's because that's what I did last night. All <laughs> that homework. Uh, with what time we have, I think we're done. Yeah. All right. So uh, before we go, however, we I believe we got some art. We yeah, got we art to art. look at. So we, we're I gonna done? look at some of that because <laughs> while you guys were doing all that, I was I was coming up with my with your list general battle plans and <laughs> like to do like what what do we have to do? Oh, by the way, and I what sh should we do? I should also say this now that you actually officially have collected Slowbon. Slowbon is a fiendish domain cleric. Oh, interesting. I was like, gonna say, oh. I should say this now that you did this. You're all cursed. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, technically you're not wrong. Like, I feel like you had mentioned something about karma when you were like, there are multiple things. Or like, maybe things will have different repercussions. Like, yep. you'll find different people, but there might be karma yeah. things. I'm like, all right, he mentioned karma and the skeleton who helped us at, like, kind of against her will and that she had died and we just woke her up and said, you're coming with us is asking, can I please just go to bed? So, yeah, yeah. She, that's all she asked for, and <laughs> yeah. one of the options almost could have been feed her soul to a fucking demon. Yeah, and that seemed really wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, like, you know, not a, not a cool move. But then we still talked this demon into coming with us, which I'm looking at as, at worst, we're saving the blueies from them. <laughs> and I mean, the alpha's still there. You never took care of that. Mm, Ren Fang seems pretty tough. <laughs> Also, and we I, showed him how good fire was against I these and, I, and I'm wondering if they're like, I, I, I have things that I want to talk to Ren Fang, <laughs> leader of the Blueies, about. Yeah, for, general, for like so. the next two, for the next two episodes, at, at least for the next two episodes, expect that there's going to be a lot of exposition. Yeah, yeah. and gathering. I, I have gathering a lot of things forces. that I know I want to do, and then some things that uh, probably should get done. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have any unfinished business or want to do any sort of social interaction with any of the previous characters, this is the time. Yeah. But we'll be taking care of that in two weeks because next week I will not be here. Mm -hmm. uh, as I will, uh, yeah, I'll be in. You will be in merry old England. Merry old Actually, I'll be flying back on yeah. next Tuesday. So yeah. You'll so that, that'll, be, that'll, be that'll be that'll be the airborne. break for the that'll be the break for the sessions. Yeah. Let's yeah. take a look at this art here. <laughs> oh, mm. let me uh, get the website up too. Sorry. No pull worries. up, pull up them tweetums. I saw a few of them like popping Ooh, up. Ooh, I already like this oh, first yeah, one. Oh yeah, I just I just saw that one actually. I just retweeted it. Let me pull that one up. Yep, uh, here it is. Doo -doo 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 -doo. From a uh, Clayzilla 987, uh, 9873. Sorry. Thoughts about redesigning my fan art of Samurai Jack as Wake for a while. I added some details to bring him up to date. Hope you all enjoy. Also been thinking about making red fan art. Yeah, he's all he's he even has the shorter haircut after the uh, <laughs> spider spike <laughs> nailed him. I like it though. Yeah, like, the, the fucking fiery soul arm kicks ass. That's that's some great Taratovsky art there. He actually like you got your Gendy in my wake, and and also like I think <laughs> wake like lends himself to that des like design too. Like that oh, just yeah. looks really the, the good very on uh ver the very uh angular. Yeah, that's the one thing I always loved about Gendy's art is that he somehow can also convey curvature, but through angles, yeah. just straight fucking lines. Still haven't watched Prime. I love that uh, specific design of the raptor skin boots because it reminds me of the like you know those dinosaur slippers that you'd have mm, as a kid. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, feeties, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Clayton nine eight seven three. Now he's upside down. Whoa. But showing up them boots. Look well, I mean, he can parkour now. Yeah, I, I can run along. I, I can run along vertical surfaces for as long as it's uh, in my range. Oh, here we go. And now, as you, ba the you basically have movement speed spider climb. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> just leaning into the mic here. Yeah, I'm here. Next up. Oh, Ezra oh, from wow. Cyclops Clown, aka Kaiju Fang. I had an idea for Ezra, Ezra's, Ezra's look if he survived the Onrush invasion. Also, if anyone's wondering why his left hand looks so different, it's because it's Scaffy. Oh, oh he man! Replaced it. Okay. You know what? I like that. I, I like that. Scaffy, pull him. the trigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scaffy now! <laughs> I, I can only do one thing with my left hand a I day. Li I like downtrodden the tramp Ezra. I this like is, this. I'm, I'm imagining this is what it was like moments before the tower <laughs> crumbled. Fell like, on him. We lost. <sighs> well, <sighs> better, better man spread myself one last time. <laughs> <laughs> Let him breathe. Assert my dominance here. 
take me one. I do. I do. You like, didn't win. I I like that. Like, I like that. Out, like post apocalypse. Like I'm just trying to survive this shit. Look for him. Though. This is like, Fallout, Ezra. Yeah, yeah. Like Ezra, who I normally like to keep kind of put together and like trying to put on at least the, fa- the facade of like a, a wealthy entertainer is like. Nah, fuck it, man. We're just here now. <laughs> this is just the world. No one knows what it's like. <laughs> God, he's, he, just... he's... That's the sad Keanu of Ezra's. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I just wanted to eat my Wake sandwich. the fuck up, samurai. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to pull on the work here, Captain. I'm trying to get everything done. With this cap, I just say... <laughs> Milady. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whoa. Next up. Oh, shit. Bangarang Aliko. Eldritch Blast. Ziaka using Eldritch Blast with her heads. Could you tell which monster I was inspired by? I wonder who. Man. Oh, okay, yeah, no. Look monster at her go. Zero. Yeah, that, that's kind of weird now. Now, like, her shoulders are peeking out of where the two heads in her robe used to be. And she's just like, oh, it's all baggy and shit now. Fuck. Now I have these extra sleeve holes. I'm not growing other arms. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, buy that for a four armed creature. I just ruined all my tops, she says as her, <laughs> as her head comes together. I, right love, on. The, I love the lasers, though. The Thank lasers, you so much, cool. Yeah, no, this is fucking dope. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, how are you going to fit this on there? Eternity. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Next wow, up. It matches up with the top of the screen. Nice. <laughs> Nice. Marvel Poison. Slowly catching up on TFS at the table. Hope nothing has happened to my girl while I've been away. Well, uh, we, we get to find out next time. Yeah, yep. actually. I, I guarantee Wright is one of the first stops we need to go to. <laughs> yeah, Wright has quite a few people in there that yep. I'd like to check in with. Oh, I love I love her <laughs> I love her Tatsubo. I know I know she doesn't exactly use it to great effect, but it looks great with well, her. Well, I mean, things have changed. You don't know what's happening. That's true. I don't, I don't ex- la- last time we saw her, she was juggling fire. So at the very least, she's been learning to control key. Did we ever ask what was with the... Oh, was she like a jellyfish woman or something who really liked war? Gentle. Yeah. Gentle. Gentle. Yeah. Did we ever find Ironic. out? Ironic. You never found she's, out anything about on, her. She's on the list here okay. to talk to. She likes ending wars. <laughs> and, and starting hey, them. we got one. A real agent of madness. One might say. <laughs> oh. hey, Slowbot likes this one. Yeah. If I wanted the true, maybe chaotic evil option is be like, oh, gentle. Do I have someone to introduce to you? And he <laughs> loves to make pacts, and he's easy to trick. <laughs> uh, great stuff. Thank you very much, Marvel Poison. And this is the last one I saw, so I'm sorry if I missed Lord. anyone. Lord of the Trees. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome chroma game. I love oh, it. Man. Oh my god. What a just beautiful got boy. over an, just got over an art block and finally gave gave in to draw chroma <laughs> But then your muse appeared. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I love him. Uh, who is this by again? Uh, this is by Lord of the Trees. Thank you, Lord of the Trees. You've created the Lord of the Shrooms, and he's perfect. Yeah, what the fuck is your sovereign going to think when they say, oh, yeah, <laughs> I found the fucking continent incarnate? Uh, so I spoke to God. He's cool. <laughs> well, not wow! quite God, but very close. Wow! <laughs> Thanks, Toad. I'm glad I invited you to my circle. <laughs> Want to play some mini games? Yeah. That's how I used to sound before I got my growth spurt. Oh, it's true! I'm just imagining the halfling version of Chromagill is Chance toads. time! <laughs> <laughs> I love oh. Mario Party. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic stuff. Thank you all so much for the amazing art. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our crew. And we'll see you guys next time at the table. Later, Wonders.